Everyone, we live in a world full of fragile, beautiful glass phones that cost around 400 bucks if you break them. Now, there's a lot of people that work in construction or work a lot in the outdoors or are incredibly uncoordinated. And that is why phones like this exist. <laughs> yeah, that's why phones like this exist. But the question is, how good is this as an actual phone? And just how indestructible is it? I'm Angie for GS Marina, and this is our review of Eulophone's Armor 7. But first things first, let's go over the exterior. This phone is built like a tank and it has the looks to match. It's thick and heavy with rubber on the top and bottom edges, bolted aluminum on the sides, and a reinforced plastic back that's plenty sturdy. It's not what I'd call an easily pocketable phone, nor is it easy to use one-handed, but you can rest assured that even if you try to drown it or break it, it'll still be totally functional, more so than the mythological Nokia 3310 the internet loves to adore. In fact, it has an IP rating of IP69K. This means it should survive a pressurized water blast from something like a machine in the food processing industry. It also has an MILSTD810 rating, which means it can survive temperature shock, fungus, humidity, and a barrage of other tough conditions. On the right side of the phone are the volume buttons, the power button, and a fingerprint reader that's a little too sensitive for our taste. It kept registering false reads whenever we picked it up. When we would actually try to use it, we'd get a message saying, too many attempts, fingerprint sensor disabled. The face unlock option worked better, but has much less security. On the other side of the phone is a customizable function key. You can set it to open the torch, the camera, the underwater camera, or all three at once. There's other options you can choose for it too, but you should know that it's quite sensitive and you'll find yourself activating the flashlight more often than you'd like. Speaking of the flashlight, it's actually made of five LED lights that can be blinding. Next to it is a heart rate scanner, which works, but isn't the fastest sensor we've ever tested. On the front is a razor-thin speaker grill, a tiny LED light, and a selfie shooter encased in a water droplet notch. It seems like a strange decision considering how bulky the phone is, but if you ignore the phone's crazy reinforcement, the display actually has pretty thin bezels. It's a 6.3-inch IPS LCD with a full HD resolution and a good pixel density of 409 ppi. At 406 nits, it has below average max brightness, but the contrast ratio is excellent for an LCD. As a whole, this screen is far from groundbreaking, but you can always try breaking stuff with it. On the other side of media consumption is audio. Despite having pretty much everything, this phone doesn't have a headphone jack and you'll have to use the dongle in the box. One little downside to the speaker is that you can't hear it in all environments. The Armor 7 has a massive 5,500 mAh battery and it scored an outstanding 140 hour endurance rating on our battery life tests. This is such an impressive result that it's actually sixth place in terms of all time batteries we've tested. Charging this beast is slow, however, and the 15 watt charger will refill a dead battery 27% in half an hour, while a full charge will take you two hours and 40 minutes. The phone is powered by the MediaTek Helio P90 chipset and eight gigs of RAM. Performance was mediocre, and when it comes to graphics, it's pretty lackluster in comparison to the Snapdragon 730 or even the Snapdragon 712. In a nutshell, this phone packs enough of a punch for smooth, everyday performance, but it's no heavy-duty gaming phone. It really depends on the game, though. The Armor 7 has Android Pie 9.0 out of the box with a few Eulophone tweaks on top. It's a clutter-free launcher, and it's close to what you'd get with stock Android. In fact, design-wise, everything from the notification shade, lock screen, and recent apps menu is what you'd find on stock Android. In settings, however, you'll find that there's an AI app launch acceleration, various gesture options, and function key customization options, among others. There's no app drawer here, but you can always install a third-party launcher if that bothers you. Maybe the most interesting part of the software is the outdoor toolbox. It offers a compass, levels tool, flashlight, and a bunch of other tools useful for outdoor and construction enthusiasts. This phone might come in handy in a variety of construction tasks. The phone supports a triple camera setup, although it feels more like a dual camera setup since the third snapper is a camera that can only be used in low light scenarios. The phone insists on shooting in its maximum resolution, so we had to lower it every time we started the camera. 
The 48 megapixel photos are simply upscaled versions of the 12 megapixel images the main cam produces, and there's really not much point in having them. Other than that, shots are nice with plenty of detail and low noise levels. Colors are washed out though. The 8 megapixel photos from the telephoto camera were disappointing. The aggressive noise reduction smeared much of the detail and the colors were quite off. Low light photos from the main cam were excellent. They had plenty of detail, great contrast, and lively colors. When you switch to the night mode, you use the third 16 megapixel camera. Images were bluish, noisy, and rarely brighter than what the main camera produced, so we're really wondering why it's there in the first place. The Armor 7 captures video only with the primary camera and you can shoot at a max resolution of 4K at 30fps. Both 4K and 1080p videos have modest detail, average dynamic range, and washed out colors. At least since the phone is hardy, you can get some unusual shots. The front camera produced average images in the best case scenario. The detail was unimpressive, the colors were a bit dull, and the dynamic range was low. Oh, and once again, it defaulted to a higher resolution 60 megapixels each time instead of defaulting to 4 megapixels as it should. This phone doesn't have the fastest chipset out there or the best camera setup. It has a good screen, okay audio, and okay, it has amazing battery life. But despite how much we tortured this phone over the course of our review and how much fun we had doing so, it survived with pretty minor damages and it looks relatively unscathed. There's a few scratches on it and if you look very closely, it's slightly, slightly bent. But considering what we did to it, that is amazing. And I'm absolutely in love with it. So if you're into construction or sailing or rock climbing or have some really, really destructive hobbies, I highly recommend this phone. I think it can survive pretty much anything. Okay, well, almost anything. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I'll see you guys next time.